But let's move on to a, a real beneficiary here of, of right. Marquise Lee going down, which is ASJ, the tight Off end. Off of a guy we hate to a guy that we <laughs> have heartfelt feelings for. Yeah, I mean, we went went in the paint form last year coming off of a of a of a career almost ended by non sobriety. Right. Idiot moves off the field. Mm-hmm. Got himself clean. Came out and had a very solid year for the Jets Productive last year. Productive year for the Jets. Revives his career. Still only twenty five years old. Right. A very frustrating yet um, maybe opportunity packed type season. Last year, as far as if you were watching some ASJ games, which he played on the Jets, so there's I can understand why you weren't. But I had ASJ in a tight end premium league, and I had my eyes on him. And he had three or four like catch no catch type. The catch rule got him on a on on a couple of tight on a couple of uh, yeah. touchdowns, and he had one touchdown that was like a great catch, but maybe one foot landed out of bounds. Like there was three or four touchdowns. Right in his hands that were legit, legit touchdowns. There were two not of them on the that definitely sheet. were absolutely real touchdowns that that the officials blew the call on. Right, that and so that that was what I that's what I mean by like opportunity is like if a if ASJ gets those four touchdowns in his game log last year, he's so much more expensive this year. Mm-hmm. And so as frustrating as it was as an owner of him last year to see that happen to him a handful of times not just once Mm -hmm. you know to see that happen uh, uh, too many times i mean i i just i just drafted him in another startup traded for him in another league and i just expect solid solid things out of asj moving forward obviously the bummer at first was him going to the you know jags you didn't like to see that but you didn't the idea of him being on the jets wasn't the best thing ever either but he's just a big man and now he's playing sober and he's getting his act together and it's like he got a second chance on his career here and he's doing out there on the field what you know what he was supposed to do when he was young right well he's always been a super uber athletic guy who's looked great and i was super excited for for a while in one league i hung on to him forever and I, i i finally cut ties with him before after he got in trouble in the uh the last in the last go round and now somebody else got him because i didn't have enough patience and i was roster churning trying to find it because i was just i I punt on tight ends a lot yeah and i was just trying to find a startable tight end i ended up with jared cook so it's not the worst Uh, but i could have had asj still Uh, but this is this is a guy who you said you know it's a bummer that he went to the jacksonville jaguars it was only a bummer that he went to the jaguars because there was already so many mouths over there one less mouth now right um there's 70 some targets in this offense last year for the tight for the tight end where Mercedes Lewis and a couple other schmucky tight ends uh, <laughs> had that. I think they still have O'Shaughnessy or yeah. And Hennessy. obviously, I mean, set Mercedes Lewis wasn't drawing targets. I mean, right. I, I imagine he had it, one, the game, he had where, one he game where he had three, three touchdowns. touchdowns. Yeah. They were like, when was the last time you were targeted in the red zone like this? He was like 2011. <laughs> I've been waiting for someone to ask me that question. Yeah, Waiting to get another three touchdown that game on the books. So you have, you have, Obviously, Lee got out of here, and, and I we mentioned it briefly. I think ASJ is a nice beneficiary of, of soaking up some middle-of-the-field uh, targets here. And we always uh, kind of said that, you know, it sucked that he went to uh, Jacksonville, but the one constant that you thought was going to happen was that you knew all these other guys weren't going to stay on the field. You knew him and Marquise Lee exactly. were pretty much going to stay on the field. Right. right. All so these that was two and three wide receiver sets, that tight end's there the whole time. Right, and he can he can play in the slot. He can play all over the place. He can block well enough and they, they run a lot of different tight ends things. And if you've been watching them through the preseason, this, the system that they've been running and the way they've been deploying the tight ends, ASJ hasn't been out there a ton, which we like to which, see, which we like to see, but there's been plenty of tight end targets and, and play schemed in that direction. Now, yeah. a lot of teams run 12 personnel and use that second tight end to gain an easy target down the field here and there. It's not a ton, but it's just to keep, everybody honest and we see that with your shanahan's and uh like when he that, that's kind of what he does yeah um so I, I i think asj's equally as good of a beneficiary as anybody in out of out of, out of Ab- these guys absolutely i already think he was going to be just fine and now with with lee not in there i'm i'm even more excited about asj he was he was 15th in total targets last year for tight ends with 71 he was 13th in receptions with 50 he was 16th in snaps out of the slot with 163, and he was 
10th among tight ends with targets from the slot with 30. Ninth in receptions with 23. So he had 23 receptions out of the slot. Um, we mentioned that, you know, earlier in the podcast, we talked about, I talked about Blake Bortles and how after accumulating all this research from what these receivers did, I, I gathered all these drop statistics um, where, let's see, Marquise Lee had nine drops last year on 103 targets, which was seventh most. DD had four drops out of 47 targets. Moncrief, who obviously wasn't a Jaguar, had four drops out of 42 targets. Keelan Cole had five drops out of 87 targets. So all these drops to go around. ASJ might be the dang most sure-handed guy. Sure-handed guy on this team. He had 71 targets, only dropped two balls. Right. And so he didn't play, I don't think, at all in the first or second preseason game. He comes in there in the third preseason game, and he flashes. You see him make a catch outside of his body where right. Portals is going to be throwing it. You see him make contested catches, which not a lot, not everybody on this team is capable of pulling off. Like, he's just, I, I feel like he's maybe the biggest beneficiary outside of Keelan Cole. Right. I mean, you saw Bortles throw 21 touchdowns last year, which isn't a crazy number, um, but the wide receivers only accounted for 12 of those touchdowns. Mm -hmm. um, the running backs accounted for some of them and the tight ends accounted for some of them, but the fact of the matter is, is ASJ in the red zone, uh, again, just to add another thing, is this, it's going to be a, a thing. Uh, he's not coming off the field. He's a bigger-bodied guy. There wasn't a ton of touchdowns to the wide receivers last year. And obviously, that's one year. Yeah. But I think that's just another thing going in his favor. Again, he's very short-handed. He's not coming off the field. He's bigger-bodied. They have a lot of these smaller-framed guys out there outside of Moncrief, who is the only one who looks like a, a, a grown man out there. All the rest <laughs> of those guys are a little slender. I think Keelan Cole's 6'1", 195. Ding. <laughs> right. Well, but uh, Moncrief is 6'2", 216. Right. So just another thing boating in, in uh, ASJ's favor there. Absolutely. All right. Well, I think that'll wrap up the Jaguars and what the fallout of Marquise Lee is. I don't know how much we really told you there. We're just trying to figure this thing out. It's confusing, and it's going to be fluid. And if another guy gets hurt, then the other two will be all in on. I'm, I feel pretty confident putting Keelan Cole in my lineup and putting ASJ in my lineup for yeah. sure. ASJ's always been a late-round target for me as well as Keelan Cole. Um, but now D.D. Westbrook, obviously Keelan Cole is getting escalated throughout this process. But now Moncrief has, has never necessarily really been on my board too much, but he's definitely – uh, he's come up there shot up the board for me a good bit as, as somebody that I would love to take a flyer on right because you see him doing more than just scoring touchdowns and right. he can score touchdowns so he's he's a tight end type or in the red zone right. he's always been good in the red zone That's where he really and I definitely don't in. mind putting DD on my team for years to come because I've liked what you've seen in the limited uh, uh, games that DD's been on the field for absolutely well there's a 40 touchdown game year in Bortles resume and it, there was a lot of uh, garbage time fueled touchdown passes for sure. Yeah, but he, 40? 40 touchdowns mm -hmm. two years ago, three years ago, two years ago. Anyway, three years ago. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a ton of touchdowns. Obviously, you, they, they were, you know, didn't mean anything because they were down by 30 points. And with that defense, it wasn't going to happen again. But he's delivered the ball in, in so, certain circumstances. So if he could take a little step forward, yeah. I think. Well, I mean, it, yeah, with that defense, you don't have to press anything and you can play the run game this is why the formations look the way exactly, they do exactly exactly so all right well hit us up on twitter at the ff dynasty let us know who, who your favorite wide receiver will be go on youtube subscribe there comment on the video for favor we're going to go ahead and take a quick break here and we'll be back with more mary to the game